most embarrassing situation you've ever been. My story, when I was 13, a doctor prescribed me an adult dose of a certain medicine based on my weight because I was a fat kid. Our body doesn't work that way, and the medicine ended up constipating me for a whole month. I didn't poop for an entire month and got very sick. I had raccoon-like eyes, my stomach would jump or flutter by itself, I had cramps, and overall it was a miserable experience. Eventually, I told my parents how long it had been since I had pooped, and they freaked out and took me to the hospital, where they gave me three enemas back to back. After the third and final one, all that water softened up all the poop just enough that I could expel it. I ran to the nearest bathroom, with my gown open in the back, and tried to make it to the toilet, but didn't make it. My butt was hovering at a 45 degree angle above the toilet when the geyser burst. This next part is not a lie, though I know some of you will think it is. I got poop everywhere, on the ceiling, somehow, on the floor, the toilet was covered, the walls, even the sink got hit with some spray. Poop was literally, yes literally, sprayed on all walls and the ceiling, it was everywhere. I felt like a new kid after that, cleaned myself up the best I could, and then had to figure out what to do. There was no way I could clean it all up, I needed a janitor, so I walked out and politely told a nurse that the bathroom needed a clean up badly. A janitor was only a few rooms down for some reason, so I saw him go by to clean it, but he didn't know who I was. He got to the bathroom, and the whole ER heard him say, Oh hell no, I ain't cleaning this up. I quit, and he did. I felt so bad and still do, I made some poor janitor quit his job over a poop caked bathroom. Was sleeping over at a girlfriend's house, in the middle of the night, I needed to take a leak. So I got up and went about my business and went back to bed. In the morning I wake up next to a slender Burmese man. I was extremely confused and I look out the doorway and see her standing there signaling me out. TLDR, slept with my girlfriend's dad. I'm not going to spend too much time with the details since this will likely just get buried at this stage of the post. My most embarrassing moment happened while I was working at a camp for the summer. I was a camp runner, meaning I was the guy that drove into town for whatever reason. At night, I'd sleep in a room with about 10 other guys, and the bathrooms were big and always busy, so I was completely abstinent nearly the entire summer. One day, I got a call that I had to pick up a camper girl who had been bitten by a spider and take her to urgent care. It was policy that if I was driving a camper of the opposite sex somewhere, there had to be another adult, 18 plus, of the opposite sex riding with us. The other adult that came with us was this cute girl that I had had a few conversations with prior. I was somewhat sleep deprived at the time, and she knew this, so as she had her camp driving clearance and knew the way to the urgent care, she offered to drive, and I accepted. The camp was in the middle of nowhere, so the ride to the urgent care was pretty long. During that time, I fell asleep. I woke up with my D-heart as a rock and the head of it poking out of the light of my shorts. Before I was able to get my bearings, I felt a surge of pressure and proceeded to ejaculate onto the glove compartment door. Immediately, I heard both a shriek and a girl yell, Oh God! Holy yes, no! I turned and looked at both girls. Both of them had obviously seen what happened, and their faces were beat red. The car was absolutely silent for the next 10 minutes apart from the sounds of me attempting to wipe up my semen with an old McDonald's bag. Finally, we reached the urgent care, and I dropped them off. After talking with the girl that drove the next day, I had apparently been hard for like 10 minutes. Both of them were fully aware of it, but both were too embarrassed to wake me up. That was the worst. TLDR worked at camp. In car with two girls I barely knew. Had wet dream. Ejaculated on glove compartment. When I was 15, I was at Sam's Club with my parents. I was in the video game section playing some demo on a PS2 and felt like I needed to fart, so I pushed a little. It felt like I had let a silent one out because I didn't hear it, and it smelled terrible about 2 seconds afterward, as usual. About 30 seconds later, the smell was still lingering, and I was just proud that I had caused that much damage to the air. My 7-year-old sister came up to me and asked where I got the chocolate milk and how I spilled it on my leg. I looked down and saw liquid feces on my right leg. I was wearing blue Nike shorts and boxers. I was terrified. I had poop on my leg, so I casually walked to the bathroom. Here comes the embarrassing part. I'm in the stall, cleaning up my leg, trying to figure out what to do with my boxers, which were covered in poop water. I couldn't keep them, the car would smell on the ride home. I couldn't leave them in the stall because there were people waiting. I had to flush them. Well, apparently, boxers don't flush well. The toilet backed up, flooding the entire stall and spreading to the rest of the bathroom. I was freaking out, but I was clean, I got most of the poop off my leg. A janitor entered the restroom, and I exited the offending stall. He asked what happened, and I couldn't speak. I should have because the boxers were still in the toilet, clearly visible. I just casually walked out. Meanwhile, my parents were ready to leave and couldn't find me. 
They aren't super hover parents, but they got worried because I wasn't in the video game section or the candy section. This ordeal was going on for about 10 minutes. Apparently, my sister told them that I walked towards the bathroom with an older man. So, my parents assumed the worst and got the security and management involved. Back to the bathroom, I'm trying to walk out, the janitor finds the boxers and is all huffy puffy. The manager is walking down the hallway towards the bathroom to try and handle the missing child with old man situation. I'm trying to leave the bathroom to handle the holy s, I just pooped my pants and clogged the toilet with my boxers situation. The manager stops me, asks me if I was in any type of situation, and I don't know how to answer. I tell him there was an incident in the restroom. He takes that as something happened to me with the old man I was apparently stolen by. He radios the security to contact the police and have them head towards the restrooms. I freak out, I didn't think flushing my underwear warned to the police getting involved. My parents get to me and ask if I'm okay. I'm too embarrassed to tell them what happened, still without knowing what their perception of the matter was. I said I'm fine. Security is rushing over, asking me if he's still in there. I have no idea what they are talking about. They ask me what happened. There is a gathering of rubberneckers trying to see what is going on. I'm really confused why this is a huge deal. I confess. I tell them that I mud butted down my leg and tried to flush my underwear down the toilet, clocking it in the process. The looks I got. Worst part was, the police were there in like 5 minutes, and I had to tell them exactly what happened to me. After the seriousness of the situation wore off and everyone realized I wasn't molested by an old man, many laughs were had at my expense. My father to this day still brings this up at family gatherings, my wedding, and holidays. TLDR liquid poop ran down my leg, my sister told my parents I was abducted by a molester, clogged toilet, had to tell police I sharked. May not be yours, but certainly the most embarrassing moment of mine and my wife's. I got my wife an early birthday gift, a smartphone, her first ever. She had been using an old indestructible Nokia forever, so I wanted to bring her into the 21st century with data, social networking, GPS, etc. Her actual birthday rolls around, and even though I got her the phone, I had nothing for the actual day. After a morning out-of-bed ritual of showering and brushing teeth, I decided to sexy myself up. I wailed all over, tied on some shirt cuffs, and was nude save for the listed attire, going for a chip and nails dancer look. I called her back, and she was rolling in laughter and loving it. She took a picture with her new phone. The plot thickens, we went fishing, caught a few, and headed home to fillet and cook the fish, which truly looked like a gourmet meal. My wife took a picture of the fish with the phone. It was late by then, the day was over, and my wife was off to bed while I decided to stay up and play some video games on the PC. Before she went to bed, she was uploading pictures to Facebook, including the fishing trip and the meal. The first image she uploaded was my nude shot, thinking it was the prepared fish fillets, and titled it Dinner Young. She couldn't figure out how to delete this accidental post on the new phone. She was screaming and running through the house to the computer room where I was. She kicked me off forcefully, into my amazement, I saw me nude on Facebook with already two comments. We managed to delete the post, thinking we had succeeded, but we were wrong. The post was deleted, but not the mobile upload photo to albums. Needless to say, 13 some odd hours later, we found more comments of praise and family disgust and realized what had actually happened. TLDR, my wife got her first smartphone and accidentally uploaded a photo of me nude to Facebook, where it was viewed by everyone we know. When I was in the Navy, I was standing watch in the engine room one day, or maybe it was night, I don't remember. I was on a submarine, so you lose track of those kinds of things. Anyway, it was during a workup for a reactor safety exam, so all of the engineering department was tired from running drills during their off hours when they would normally be sleeping. About halfway through my six-hour watch, I had to S, but I didn't want to wake someone up to stand my watch while I pooped. So I held it in like a boss for three hours until my relief came. By the time I was screaming down the P-way to the watertight hatch, I had to go so bad I was almost puking. But the watertight hatch that separates the engine room from the forward compartment is about two feet off the ground, too high for me to just bend my legs at the knees and scoot through. My anal clench is the only thing holding back this fecal maelstrom. So I undog the hatch, it's a big mechanism, takes a few seconds to open, and lift one leg to get it through, and my colon unloads with a fury unmatched. Tube 1 has been launched, and the charge is currently running out of my boxers, out through the lead of my coveralls, onto the deck, and rolling a few inches to the horrified gaze of the rest of my watch team standing behind me. Luckily, I'm an engineer, so I have a rag in my back pocket. I go to scoop it up, bending over straight-legged and cheeks hugging like high school sweethearts. I walk through the hatch with S in hand and head forward. The first room you hit when you head forward is the mess, where most of the crew who is awake and not on watch hangs out, watches movies, plays games, etc. 
Right now, it's full of off-going watchstanders having whatever meal is being served. I go to toss the rag in the trash, and one of my buddies who watched this whole thing unfold is standing in the middle of the mess deck and shouts, Hey Mikey, WTF are you doing? You can't throw us in the trash, which is actually true. We compact all of our trash and jettison it. Anything that is liquid in it cannot be compacted or it will lose out the side of the compactor and possibly squirt the poor kid that has to operate the machine. So I'm standing there with a piece of S in my hand, half the crew is there, chewing on chicken wheels, and staring at me and my bundle of joy. That was the most embarrassing thing I think I've ever had to endure. Okay okay, that's pretty bad. I posted this a while back, but now it's time to put up again. I feel your pain, just in a different way. I asked my pants when I headed back to Iraq after two weeks r, &R. Every time I went back to Iraq from the US, I'd have the worst diarrhea for about two weeks. This time was a bit different. After three weeks of liquid S pouring out of my ass, I decided to go to the military hospital in the green zone to see if they could help. I'm waiting in line with other people who have serious maladies, and when my turn came, I spoke to the waiting medics and told them about my problem. They in turn announced to anyone in airshot that I had a poopy problem and asked, do you need some medicine because your butthole hurts? They continued to berate me for wasting their time as they had other serious injuries to attend to, and at this point, everyone in the waiting room was having a good laugh at my expense. They finally gave me some flagell for my guts and some emodium, then told me to get the F out of the hospital and not to come back again until I had a broken bone or gunshot wound for them to work on. I gladly left and headed out the front door. I started to walk across the street from the hospital to the bus stop and had just put my right foot on the curb to step up from the street when I had to fart. I didn't think anything of it and let it rip. In an instant, what must have been a gallon of liquid S rocketed out of my ass, down my pants, filled up my boots, and began pouring out onto the hot asphalt. Now here I am, right foot on the curb, left foot in the street, frozen in horror in a really twisted Captain Morgan's pose with S leaking out of my pants. The bus pulls up to the bus stop, and the Pakistani driver opens the door and in his Pakistani accent says, Well, come on buddy, let's go. I just turned and looked at him and said, Now nah, man, please, please just leave. He then proceeded to ask me why I was standing at a bus stop if I didn't want to get on the bus and how illogical that was, etc, etc. He obviously couldn't see the humiliating situation I was in, but at this point, everybody on the bus was looking, and they had a bird's eye view. So now I'm arguing with the Pakistani driver, while the rest of the soldiers on the bus are pointing, laughing, and taking pics. So I finally had enough and told the driver, just please get the F out of here okay? The driver gives me the finger, says F you, A, closes the doors, and the bus pulls away, leaving me still frozen in my Captain Morden's pose with the liquid S creating an ever-growing pool around me. The US Embassy, where I stayed, is about a mile away, so I sucked it up and began walking the longest mile I'd ever walked in my life. It was easy to follow me along my journey because there was liquid S squishing out of my boots with every step along the way. I finally got to the US Embassy, and if you think the TSA and Homeland Security Nazis at the airport are tough to deal with, you've never been through an embassy checkpoint manned by Marines. Only 10 people are allowed into the checkpoint at a time. Once inside, a heavy glass and steel door shuts, and you have to take everything out of your bag to be x-rayed and searched. You then have to walk through a metal detector and get frisked. Once all 10 people have been processed, the exit door opens to this airlock-like room, and you can proceed to the embassy grounds. Needless to say, I was dreading this obstacle standing in the way between me and my trailer, where I could ultimately shower all of this s off me, but I knuckled down and got in line. Eventually, I made it into the airlock search room, and one of the marines says, Damn. Who ripped one? I humbly raised my hand and told him that it was much worse and that I'd had an accident. He walked over to me from behind the counter and says, F man. You're leaking s all over the f floor. What the f dude? One of us has to clean this s up, you know. Fing A. Second time I'd been called that in 30 minutes. I apologized profusely while a couple of people were trying to politely conceal their dry heaving and asked the marines if they could just please let me go on through. They replied, oh f no. Not gonna happen. You're gonna get searched just like everybody else, FMC nasty. So the two of them approached me closer, while the other nine people were watching this spectacle, and proceeded to play rock paper scissors to determine who was going to have to frisk my ass ass. Rock ultimately triumphed over scissors, and a very pissed off marine donned surgical gloves and frisked me, but only after I walked through the metal detector, leaving a trail of S behind me, of course. After I was frisked and thoroughly searched, I had to wait for everyone else to be searched, which took what seemed like an eternity. Finally, the door opened, and I began the last 400 yard walk to my trailer while passing people looked at me with various expressions of laughter, sympathy, and disgust.
I finally made it to my trailer and was especially quiet as to not wake my roommate, but alas, I wasn't quiet enough. He woke up, sniffed, and said, Damn man, what's that smell? Did you us yourself or something? Now I know he said that half jokingly, but then he wiped the sleep out of his eyes and beheld the horror that had been the past hour of my life, leaking out onto the floor of our trailer. I just said, yeah man, I'll clean it up, but only after I shower if you don't mind. He just shook his head, hacked a bit, and then dry heaved a couple of times. I got in the shower fully dressed and proceeded to try and UNF myself out of this very sticky and smelly situation. After rinsing all fold clothing and myself repeatedly, I quickly mopped the floors, changed clothes, and bundled up my uniform into a plastic bag. As I made my way to the dry cleaners, I tossed my boots into a dumpster as there was no way a mile's worth of squished and S was ever going to rinse out. I also happened to notice bits of the S trail I left along the way, and this just added to my utter humiliation. I arrived at the dry cleaners to drop off my uniform, and the clerk asked me, why are they wet? I told him that I had mistakenly put them in the wash a couple of days ago, but then removed them once I realized my mistake, and the reason they smelled so bad was probably mildew since they'd sat in a plastic bag for so long. The Indian clerk replied in his Indian voice, No, my friend, that smells like S. To which I replied, Look man, can you just please F take my clothes and dry clean them? I'm having a really bad day. To which he replied, Okay, okay, friend, but don't be such an A. Talk about a bad day in Baghdad. A couple of seniors from my high school were pulling into the parking lot before school in a beater F-150. It was a nice Friday morning, and they had come up with this silly plan to do a drive-by mooning of some popular girls no doubt to impress. They had done this before, so they had a rehearsed plan. As they proceeded to pull closer to the girls, the driver honks his horn as the passenger drops his pants and sticks his ass all the way out the window. The passenger felt a nice fart welling up inside at this time, so he decided it would be extra funny to turn this into a drive-by gassing. He executed with precision timing. Here is where it all goes wrong. The previous day was senior ditch day and he had spent much of it consuming copious amounts of alcohol, apparently passing out a number of times. So when he let her rip, it was not a bubble of gas he was releasing, but a torrent of bile and fecal matter in the form of a geyser. From five feet away at eye level, he unleashed a 24-pack of S and hosed the girls. While the first escaped with little damage, the two other girls took direct hits. Vomit, screaming, and crying were produced by many spectators. Throughout my elementary and high school years, I was in love with this girl. She was a gorgeous redhead, exceptionally intelligent, and very kind. She also had the most stunning green eyes you will ever see in your life. However, our school was very cliquey, and we did not associate with the same groups. I should say that I was, and still am, an incredibly intelligent person, though my hair was always long and greasy, my nose was a bit larger than average, and I hung out with a bit of a bad crowd. One day, we had a particularly grueling set of exams, all of which could determine our future and where we would end up. After one of the tests, I was sitting outside, going over the test to see what I might have missed. And then there came, him. The worst bully in the school, who hated me from day one. He constantly picked on me, doing whatever he could to make my life absolutely miserable. Of course, he could do no wrong, seeing as he was in the popular clique and was the star athlete of the school. I knew he also liked this red-headed angel, and it simply made me hate him even more. So he and his friend got bored and decided to engage in their favorite pastime, picking on me. I tried to defend myself, but with limited success. Finally, the red-haired girl yelled at my tormentor to stop, saying that it was wrong. I was in a rage at this point, anger boiling over stronger than you can imagine. I hated everyone for laughing, I hated him for doing this to me yet again, and I, for some reason, picked her as the outlet for my rage. I called her a mudblood. She hardly ever spoke to me again, and I knew any chance I ever had with her was gone. After we graduated, she married the bully and had a child. She and her husband later died and I was never the same. Now I have to teach that little S at school. TLDR had a huge crush, called her a foul name, and then had to watch her son after she died. I don't know how I remember this. In first grade, my entire school, K-12, pretty small school, had an assembly for God knows what. The assembly was some sort of educational thing where the actors sang and danced to try to get the students to learn in the fun way. Now, what makes this interesting was that I was watching some Spider-Man cartoons the night before. During the assembly, one of the actresses asks the audience, who sailed the ocean blue in 1492? I was half asleep at this point, but one of my friends poked me and told me to raise my hand, so I did because I was in first grade and I didn't know any better. She calls on me. I didn't even know the question at this point, so a friend whispered it to me. I had no idea. So, I blurted out the first name that popped into my head, Norman Virgil Osborne. 
Yes, I answered her question with the Green Goblin. I said this quite emphatically and confidently, by the way. The whole auditorium became deathly silent at this point. No one laughed, no one murmured. I think it was because people were so confused and flabbergasted that there was really nothing anyone could say or do. The actress had this look on her face for a good five seconds before she said, No, that's not right. But why don't you come up here and dance with us? I was very reluctant to, but if you have like 500 people waiting on your move, there's not much you can do. As I'm walking towards the stage, again, deathly silent, my older sister, probably in junior high at this point, screams, Yeah, would go manly Y-E-H-H-H-H. It didn't make things much better. I get to the stage. The music starts, and the actress starts square dancing with me, along with about 10 other cast members. After about 10 seconds, I had a nope moment and literally ran off the stage, through the side doors, and ran home, wasn't too far, maybe a mile away. I'm in college now, and although I think absolutely an O1 one remembers it, I will forever. TLDR, answered a history question with the Green Goblin, square danced for 10 seconds, ran off stage and straight home. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe the channel for more exciting stories. You have to get out of the matrix, so watch our other videos right now. Stop chilling on your couch just like that. Get on with it.